Okay, so part five of my improving the cheapest laptop. So this laptop was $69.99 on TikTok. I see they've cropped up on there again, uh, and there are some people making some crazy claims about how good the performance is. But that said, I've had a really good time playing around with it and installing various different things. So today I'm gonna to install Raspberry Pi OS, which is this operating system. I've got it running on a Raspberry Pi 4 here, uh, but it even runs on this very old Raspberry Pi from 2011. Not well on this one, but it's gonna be quite a lot better on this Coda laptop. So let's pop a USB stick in it. I've been sent this one by Orico recently, and it is really nice quality. It's very, very solid. Uh, it's an SSD USB stick, 512 gig. So let's pop that in here, other way around. So Linux Lite has detected my USB stick and it's come up with this window, but I don't need that for the moment. Uh, I'm gonna go to the Raspberry Pi website and you can see here, Raspberry Pi desktop for PC and Mac. So this is Debian with Raspberry Pi desktop. And as it says in the description, if you have an old computer that's no longer powerful enough to run a modern commercial operating system, try Debian with Raspberry Pi desktop. It can often make the computer usable once more. So if we scroll down, uh, you can hit download here. So this version is, uh, it's a 32-bit version from July the 1st, 2022. So it's not the most recent. I'm thinking it's probably not gonna have the new menu where you press the Windows key and it comes up with all the options, but let's install it anyway, because it's gonna be very lightweight. So download, and what's that gonna take? About 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so that's all finished. So I'm gonna start up Raspberry Pi Imager and choose OS, scroll all the way down to custom. And here is my download. Hit open, choose my storage. Well, that's my 512 Orico USB stick and hit write. And yes, this will be nice and fast because it's a very fast USB stick. Yes, yeah, super quick. That's already done, just verifying. It's so much nicer to have a really fast USB stick for doing things like this. Okay, so all done. Let's hit continue. And that shows me the USB stick. So I just need to shut this down now. And switch on and keep tapping F7. Now I'm in the boot menu. I can choose the Orico USB stick and hit enter. And go down to install. Actually graphical install. And just fill in the various different details uh, about your operating system. Now my trackpad isn't working. So I'm gonna use the tab key to move around. So I've just highlighted continue. And I'm hoping the mouse will come back at some point. Hopefully most of this will be automated. Let's go with use entire disk. Installing onto the EMMC drive 64 gig, which is built into the laptop. I'm gonna use the default option here and continue. Now I need to select yes and continue. Apologies for the background noise, my builders are outside with the digger, but installation is complete, so it's time to boot into your new system. Make sure to remove your installation media. So let's unplug that USB stick and hit continue. Oh, okay, I still have no mouse control, so let's try and use the cursors or tab down yeah, that's highlighted, continue, and enter. So just the same as a normal Raspberry Pi, it goes to the normal setup, and the mouse seems to be working fine. So I can pick all of this, pick a username and a password, and hit next. So it's detected my Wi-Fi, which is good. And I'm gonna let it do the update for the software. We might need to wait a few more seconds for it to pick up my network, so let's go back and do next for update software. It's picked up the network now. So it's downloading quite a few updates, which is good considering the software came out in July 2022 and it's now December. Okay, so that's all restarted. I've just installed NeoFetch, so let's just run that and show you that it's actually running uh, the OS as 64-bit. I was sure it was gonna be 32-bit. I'm sure I'd read 32-bit before, but maybe one of the updates that's come along has given us that option. The reason the resolution is showing two screens is because I'm using a 22 inch monitor so I can screen capture. Um, but uh, this is the resolution of the laptop. And you can see host coder 1.2, picks up my Celeron quad core processor 2.2 gigahertz. 
and it's using 466 megabytes of memory. So the trackpad's working fine, and uh, as you can see, mouse click is working fine as well. Unfortunately, I can't use the feather touch that I would normally use. So if I go into mouse and keyboard settings, there's very little in here. Uh, and what I would normally do is tap with two fingers to right click, and just tap very lightly with one finger to left click, but unfortunately that doesn't work. So I'm gonna plug a mouse in to do the rest of the video. Now I would probably end up changing this because uh, as an operating system it's so light uh, and the laptop doesn't need to be quite as light as this. But it is definitely very fast. Uh, you know, all of this is lovely and snappy. Uh, if I open the browser, then the browser launches nice and quick. Uh, and if I go to my channel, so YouTube, Lee PSP video. Overall, I think for this sort of level of seller on laptop, Raspberry Pi OS is such a light operating system that it does work really nicely. So let's have a look at Chromium and let's play a video. So if I go for my little video demo, this one here, and see how that plays. I might need to, I'm gonna mute that and let's go full screen. Oh, it, <laughs> it allows me to pick 4K. What's it gonna do at 4K? Well, we'll give it a try. Let's right click and do stats for nerds. Uh, okay, so it's definitely dropping frames at 4K. Yeah, which is to be expected, but let's drop it down to, uh, we'll try 1440 and see if that makes enough of a difference. So let's see how many frames it's gonna drop at that. One frame, 12 frames. Looks all right. No, it's not, uh, it's going slow. So let's click on that again and just drop it down to 1080. I mean, they, there's no reason to go above 720 for video on this particular laptop because of the display, although it is on my 1080 monitor. Yeah, and that seems to be working fine. Two frames dropped and it doesn't look to be, yeah, it's not, not dropping anymore. So let's escape out of that. Uh, let's just do, uh, let's go with BBC Sport and see what that comes up like. So pretty quick. And let's go for Hot UK Deals. And launch the website, which has got loads of um, images and things. Yeah, the browser works nicely. There's no problem with that. Uh, and then back to BBC Sport, which is all gonna be about England in the World Cup at the moment. Uh, so let's go back to YouTube. Yeah, so browser working fine got this battery indicator. I didn't have that on um, Ubuntu Lite or Linux Lite. It was, uh, I couldn't tell how much my battery had run down, but on this you can see uh, time remaining four hours. Uh, it says it's discharging. Uh, we've got a microphone volume, we've got a headphone volume, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all of this comes up nicely. Uh, also, if I press the Windows key and start typing in Imager, it has got the new menu features. So with those updates, they have actually added all of this, which I think is a brilliant feature. So if you want to write an operating system, then this is already built in. So really, really pleased with that. So I would end up changing the desktop environment, but uh, you can do a few things to, to change it. So I like to uh, move this to the bottom. I like to make it a lot larger as well and the same with the icons. And I'm not sure if I can change the color on this. You can in on a Raspberry Pi, although not as much on the 64 bit. Oh, let's see if we can add, uh, say for instance, CPU usage. Yeah, temperature is there as well. So let's do temperature. Yeah, so that comes up. And let's see if we can do CPU frequency. Let's do that. And then you hover over it and you can see that it's throttling back at the moment, then it goes up to 2088. And remember, we've got the Office software in here as well, so if we wanted to do uh, a PowerPoint equivalent piece of software, you'll see that it opens up pretty quick. Although first usage usually takes a bit longer. Uh, so Blueprint Plans, let's, so let's click on one of these and open it up. And so nice to see all of that built in and that's all working fine. So let's close that down. VLC is the video player of choice, which is really good. Image viewer, we've got a few very basic games on here. 
accessories. So we've got things like Terminal and our text editor. All the reference stuff, if you don't know about this um, and you're interested in Raspberry Pis, the bookshelf has all of the magazines as PDFs, which you can download for free. There you go, so you can pick right back to the very early issues. I found that very, very useful on the Pi. And what happens when you do Raspberry Pi configuration? That'll be interesting, is it in our Raspberry Pi? Okay, so system, boot to desktop, boot to CLI, auto login, display settings, remote access, they're nowhere near the same as you get with a Raspberry Pi. But good how they've kept it the same. It's you know it, it does feel like you're using it on a Raspberry Pi. I think I'm going to install um, a different graphical user interface. So let's try sudo apt install task cell. Okay, so task cell is already in it. So if we launched, oh no, I need to do sudo task cell. I always do that. So it will work, but it won't it won't let me uh, install anything. So control alt T, get a terminal up, and we'll do sudo task cell. And let's just for a change go with cinnamon. So space, tab down and hit enter for OK. And come back when that's all done. Okay, so it's Okay, so I've restarted it after installing Cinnamon, but it doesn't seem to have applied much. Uh, loads of software has changed, so there's all sorts of things been added in each section here. So for instance, internet, you can see we've got Firefox. You can hear there's an accessibility feature which is uh, announcing everything that I hover over, and I can't see a setting to turn that off. I'm sure it's there somewhere. Um, but uh, yeah, sound and video, you can see we've got Cheese, which is the camera app. We've got create and copy CDs. We've got Rhythm Box, we've got uh, GIMP on there as well, we've got a load more games, all sorts of things have been installed. But even if I, normally what I would do in this situation is log out, and then when you log back in, you get an option to pick your desktop environment, but I don't seem to have that. Uh, even when I start typing, so if I put in my password, uh, I just don't have any other options uh, and normally you would have some option somewhere to be able to change it. So maybe I'll go back to standard Raspberry Pi OS for a bit and try that a bit more. But I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.